Did you know that the cheeseburger you had for lunch might have a bigger carbon footprint than your drive to campus? Or that a single almond requires more than a gallon of water to grow? Or that climate change might make it impossible to grow coffee? The way we produce, transport, and consume food has profound consequences for the environment, touching on issues like climate change, water scarcity, biodiversity loss, and pollution. And so in this video, we're going to look at the environmental impact of our food system. The agricultural sector is the world's largest user of land. Indeed, Roughly 38% of the world's land surface is used for agricultural purposes, with about 12% of the world's land being used for crop production and about a quarter used as pastures or meadows for livestock production. This extensive land use has significant environmental consequences. Agriculture is the leading cause of deforestation globally, as the need to grow new farmland intensifies. Forests are cleared for crop production and grazing pasture, fragmenting and destroying habitats, disrupting ecosystems, and reducing biodiversity. Slash and burn techniques release carbon stored in trees and soil into the atmosphere, exacerbating climate change. This is especially prevalent in areas like the Amazon rainforest, where large swaths of land are cleared for soy production and cattle ranching. Intensive farming practices like monocropping, heavy tilling, and overgrazing can degrade soil health and facilitate soil degradation. Overreliance on chemical fertilizers, lack of crop rotation, and intensive tilling can deplete soil nutrients and disrupt soil structure. This makes the soil more susceptible to erosion by wind and water, reducing its fertility and productivity over time, and fueling desertification in some regions. Natural grasslands and wetlands are important ecosystems in their own right, but are often converted for agricultural use. This destroys habitats and disrupts these ecosystems' natural functions, such as carbon sequestration, water filtration, and flood control, while also providing habitats for diverse species. It also releases stored carbon into the atmosphere. This trend is amplified as more and more people around the world shift to more meat-intensive diets, as the production of meat generally requires significantly more land than raising crops. Producing a thousand calories of corn or rice, for example, requires less than one square meter of land, while producing a thousand calories of chicken requires about six and a half square meters of land, and producing a thousand calories of beef requires more than 120 square meters. Agriculture is also a significant contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. Ruminant animals, particularly cattle, produce significant amounts of methane through their digestive processes, enteric fermentation. Methane is more effective in trapping heat in the atmosphere than carbon dioxide, making livestock farming a significant contributor to global warming. The use of synthetic, nitrogen-based fertilizers in crop production leads to the release of nitrous oxide, another potent greenhouse gas. This occurs through processes like denitrification in the soil, whereby soil bacteria convert the nitrate and fertilizer into nitrogen gas, which is then released into the atmosphere. Finally, as forests and wetlands are cleared and converted into agricultural land, the carbon stored in the vegetative matter is released into the atmosphere as carbon dioxide. The use of fossil fuels in farm machinery, transportation, and the production of fertilizers and pesticides also contributes to CO2 emissions. Again, we can get a sense of the scale of the greenhouse gas emissions by considering the kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalents released to produce 1,000 calories of specific food items. Growing 1,000 calories of crops like maize, wheat, or others on already cultivated land has a comparatively small carbon footprint, releasing less than 1 kilogram of CO2 for every 1,000 calories produced. But as we move up the chart, the CO2 released increases, with the production of items like pork, poultry, meat, and cheese, releasing about 5 kilograms of greenhouse gases for every 1,000 calories produced, and cattle production being the most intensive, releasing more than 35 kilograms of greenhouse gas equivalents for every 1,000 calories of beef produced. Agriculture is the largest consumer of fresh water globally. Indeed, according to some estimates, agriculture uses about 2 quadrillion gallons, about 70% of global freshwater demand, annually, with some crops and food items requiring significant water to produce. Depending upon the method of production, for example, potatoes require between 500 and 1,500 liters per kilogram produced, maize between 1,000 and 1,800 liters of water per kilo, and rice between 1,900 and 5,000 liters of water per kilo of rice produced. But this is nothing compared to meat production. 
Eggs, for example, require about 3,300 liters of water per kilogram of eggs. Chicken requires about 4,000 liters of water per kilo. And beef requires up to 70,000 liters of water per kilogram of beef produced. Water is implicated in agriculture in several ways. Many crops require intensive irrigation, especially in arid regions. This can deplete surface water resources and strain aquifers, leading to water scarcity and conflict over water resources in some regions. Runoff from agricultural fields can carry fertilizers and pesticides into waterways, causing pollution and harming aquatic ecosystems. Excess nutrients can lead to eutrophication of water bodies, causing algal blooms and dead zones in oceans and lakes. In many regions, groundwater is being extracted for irrigation at rates faster than it can be naturally replenished, lowering water tables and depleting aquifers, raising concerns about future water security for agriculture and human consumption. Finally, modern agricultural practices have significant impacts on biodiversity. The prevalence of monoculture farming, where large areas are devoted to a single crop variety, reduces genetic diversity. This makes crops more vulnerable to pests and disease, reduces overall ecosystem resilience, and often leads to increased pesticide use and further ecological disruption. The resulting widespread use of pesticides, particularly neonicotinoids, has been linked to declines in pollinator populations, including bees. This not only affects wild ecosystems, but threatens the pollination services crucial for many crops. And it also impacts birds, fish, and other wildlife. Intensive animal farming practices often prioritize efficiency over animal welfare. This can lead to stress, disease, and reduced genetic diversity in livestock populations. It can also lead to the overuse of antibiotics, contributing to antibiotic resistance. The environmental footprint of our food system extends beyond the farm. Food processing and packaging requires significant amounts of energy for cooking, refrigeration, drying, and other processes. This energy is often derived from fossil fuels, contributing to greenhouse gas emissions. It can also be water-intensive, especially when producing items like meat, dairy, and beverages. And effluents, or wastewater, from processing plants contain organic matter, nutrients, and chemicals that can harm aquatic ecosystems if not properly managed. Further, the packaging material themselves are often made from plastic, paper, or metal, consuming resources in their production and contributing to waste. Even recyclable or compostable packaging requires energy and resources to process. The transportation of food from farms to processing plants, distribution centers, retailers, and ultimately to the final consumer also requires energy and refrigeration, releasing significant amounts of greenhouse gases in the process. Indeed, this impact is often described using the concept of food miles, which are an effort to think about the distance food travels from farm to fork. According to one estimate, the average meal travels more than 2,000 miles to reach the final consumer. And the final consumer contributes to the environmental impact of our food system in a couple of ways. First, they contribute to food waste by discarding uneaten portions or spoiled food at home. This is a significant problem as it means that resources used to produce that food were essentially wasted. Indeed, some estimates conclude that more than one-third of global food production is wasted. Second, dietary choices, particularly the consumption of meat and dairy products, have a substantial environmental impact. Animal agriculture requires more land, water, and feed resources than plant-based agriculture and generates more greenhouse gas emissions. A simple fast food meal highlights how this all plays out. The hamburger patty is probably the most environmentally intensive part of the meal. Raising cattle requires significant land and water resources, and cows produce methane, a potent greenhouse gas, through digestion and manure. Deforestation for grazing land and feed production further exacerbates the environmental burden. Dairy production for the cheese also requires substantial resources and contributes to greenhouse gas emissions, primarily methane from cows and nitrous oxide from fertilizer used on feed crops. And processing milk into cheese is energy intensive, requiring refrigeration and fermentation processes. The wheat for the bun and vegetables like lettuce, tomatoes, and others also involve land use, water use, and often pesticide application, which can lead to soil degradation and water pollution. Potatoes for the french fries require arable land, and intensive farming can lead to soil erosion and degradation. Further, they're often grown using synthetic fertilizers and pesticides, contributing to water pollution and soil contamination. 
and the processing of potatoes into french fries requires energy for washing, peeling, cutting, and frying, with frying oils having their own environmental footprint related to their production. Palm oil production, for example, often involves deforestation and habitat destruction. And soda requires sugarcane and sugar beet cultivation or corn production in the United States, all of which require significant water for irrigation. Large-scale sugar cultivation can lead to deforestation and habitat loss, and often involves the heavy use of pesticides and fertilizers, contributing to water pollution and soil degradation. Further, the packaging of the meal itself generates waste, which generates methane as it decomposes. And while this single meal might seem insignificant, its cumulative impact, multiplied by billions of meals served worldwide every day, is substantial. But by understanding the environmental consequences of our food choices, we can make more informed decisions and advocate for more sustainable food systems. That said, it's possible to reduce the environmental footprint of our food system. Starting at the beginning of the food chain, promoting sustainable agricultural practices would help maintain soil health, reduce water use, and minimize chemical inputs, leading to a more resilient food system. There are a variety of practices that fall under this banner. Crop rotation and biodiversity help maintain soil fertility and reduce pest and disease cycles while reducing the need for expensive and environmentally destructive herbicides, pesticides, and fertilizers. Conservation tillage reduces soil erosion and improves water retention. Integrated pest management minimizes the use of chemical pesticides by using natural predators and other biological controls. We could go on and on, but the point here is that these practices can transform agriculture from a major carbon emitter to potentially a carbon sink while maintaining productivity, reducing production costs, and the negative environmental externalities associated with food production. Improved water management strategies could also reduce the environmental impact of irrigation and protect water resources critical to farming, especially in regions facing water scarcity. Again, there are a variety of ways to accomplish this. Drip irrigation systems deliver water directly to the plant roots, reducing water waste. Indeed, some estimates suggest that drip irrigation systems can reduce the water needed for crop production by as much as 80% over traditional pivot sprinkler systems. Rainwater harvesting captures and stores rainwater for agricultural production, providing an alternative source of water for farmers. And sensors can now be used to monitor soil moisture levels and optimize irrigation schedules to reduce overwatering. But just as important is developing a water policy that promotes sustainable use of water resources and ensures that sufficient water is available to protect food production. The growing tensions between states that are party to the Colorado River Compact highlight how the failure of such policies can intensify conflict over water resources. At the consumer level, roughly one-third of the food produced globally is wasted. This waste represents a massive squandering of resources, including land, water, energy, and labor. Reducing food waste at all levels, from production to consumption, is therefore essential in minimizing the environmental footprint of our food system. There are a variety of ways we might accomplish this. Enhancing storage, transportation, and logistics to reduce spoilage. Educating and encouraging consumers to buy only what they need and to properly store food to extend its shelf life. Redirecting surplus food to those in need instead of discarding it. And turning food waste into a valuable compost rather than sending it to landfills. Animal agriculture, particularly beef production, is a major contributor to greenhouse gas emissions, deforestation, and water pollution. Reducing meat consumption, especially from industrial farming systems, can significantly lessen these impacts. Further, consuming locally and seasonally produced foods can reduce the environmental impact associated with long-distance transportation and storage, while simultaneously supporting local economies and promoting food system resilience. Locally sourced, seasonal foods typically require less transportation and storage, reducing associated emissions and energy use. And this approach often involves smaller-scale farming practices that can be less environmentally damaging than large industrial ones, though it's important to note that transportation is not always the largest factor in a food's carbon footprint. Finally, government policies play a crucial role in shaping our food system. Advocating for policies that incentivize sustainable practices, discourage environmentally harmful ones, and promote access to healthy, sustainable food for all can create systemic change and accelerates the transition to a more sustainable food system. But that's it for now. As always, please leave any questions you have in the comments section below, and thanks for watching.